Hey everyone, I'm here at New Jang City where I've decided to take on a new custom build project and to take you with me along the way with a focus on the process itself, what I'm thinking, what I go through, how I go from having basically nothing to start with to having something that I consider to be finished well enough to put into the city. Today's subject is going to be over here in the Cargo Harbor area. And I actually have a stand-in for what I want to do. So I'm not starting from absolutely nothing this time, but pretty close to it. I'm going to be working on a replacement for this crane right here. So let me just tell you where I'm at right now. I want there to be a crane in this space. I want there to be the ability to onload and offload ships over here on this side, to onload and offload ships over here on this side. I've already got these tracks in place. I knew that I wanted those based on the size of a truck that needs to be able to drive through there or forklifts and other things that need to be able to go through there. And I had already decided that I believe I want to use the green legs to hold it up, but I'm not 100% positive of that. What I have up here above is just a piece of an official Lego crane, and I don't want to use that because I want to do something completely custom and done from scratch. A critical first step here is to make some space. I need to have some clean room where I can bring lots of parts out and start working on possibilities and different experiments. So all this stuff from the last build I was working on needs to go. And that is much, much better. At least for me, clutter is the enemy of creativity, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. And I'm already stuck. No joke, I don't know where to start. But that's okay, because this is a very, very common problem. This happens all the time, and it's one of the reasons that I haven't completed this relatively small project up to this point, even though I've had this mock-up for the thing, for the general idea, sitting around for months. Creativity just doesn't always immediately come to you. You don't always get the immediate answers just by looking at something. Even if you have a pretty good idea of the overall end goal. So what I'm going to do is what I usually try to do to get through these blockages and start with what I do know. I know that these rails here in light gray are spaced at 6, 8, 10, 12 studs. So I need to get some wheels that will fit into these rails and they need to actually turn freely to be able to have this thing sliding up and down on this, this dock and this pier. And I also want to bring in some sort of suggestion of propulsion for those wheels. Now, this is not going to be powered by power functions or anything like that. It doesn't need to actually work, but it needs to look like in the Lego world, it would work. And finally, this green color here, you know, I chose that some time ago. And today I'm not 100% confident in that green color. I like the A-frame pieces themselves, and I definitely want to use those here for their shape, but I'm going to reconsider the color one more time and see what I have. Hmm. Yeah, I think I want to go with red. Yeah, that definitely feels more right to me. It's, it's saying nice things to my brain. And this is where the fun begins. Smirk. So here are a couple of just regular rails, just as stand-ins. And I have here a plate that I'm just gonna use to set this up as a simulation of what I'm actually gonna have. If I was unclear a minute ago, it's 12 studs between these. They're spaced on 14 studs. So that should line up right there. Yeah, and that'll just give me a basis for testing things out. So I need to figure out what exact wheels that I want to use that are going to give me the stability that I want. Ideally, I'd like to have them on either side of the rails, not just in or out. And then I'll build from there and see what I come up with. I want to talk about some patterns that you're going to see most likely throughout the entire build, though, such as me picking one direction to go and then completely giving up on that and going in a different direction. Because I don't have a known end goal, I'm not going for one specific look as yet, I have all this freedom to try different things, and I try to take advantage of that freedom as much as possible, as that's one of the fun things about creative work. So you'll see me sometimes do multiple experiments for the same 
sub-assembly and I'll have multiple side by side and I'll be looking at them and sometimes I'll pick one direction to go and I'll be pretty confident in that and as I get maybe 75% of the way done executing to that specific goal, I will go back to a previous design. And I think that's okay. You know, it doesn't feel to me like a loss of time, it doesn't feel like a waste of time. It just feels like I'm giving things a little bit more time to marinate. To make the whole thing look more stable, and I really do mean just look more stable, it's plenty strong as it is. These these A-frame pieces will hold up anything that I want to attach to them, but just to make it feel a little bit better when I look at the thing, I decide to connect the legs on either side. So I have just a platform going across, which also gives me a little bit more space to put some additional detail just for the sake of detail, you know, just for the sake of that visual interest introducing some texture, some things to, to make the eye stop at different points, to make the eye move, and to give it a feeling of more realism, even if the specific items that I'm building don't really mean anything in real life, or don't really correlate to anything that would actually exist if this was a real life crane. Here you also see me moving on to the motor system, and I realized after the fact that I was taking a lot of inspiration from something from my childhood of watching boat launch uh, cranes, which have a similar structure to this at their base, where there are four main long legs that come down from the sky, and then you've got wheels at each corner. So for each corner, I decided to make one motor, and it would be vertically mounted. I didn't decide whether it would be an electric system or a hydraulic system or a combination between the two probably more likely a combination between the two, but I just wanted something that, again, you know, would, would look okay to me. So I try a bunch of different possibilities for how to make something cylindrical and adding a little interesting design to it. And then I just copy that to all four corners. With the motors in place, I just come back and fill in some of that greebling that I mentioned a minute ago. It's not a whole lot that goes down here. I do have a little bit of a constraint, uh, I think a visual constraint, with the smoothness and the, the lack of studs on the major A-frame pieces. I don't want to break that too much. I want to stay with that smoothness. So I end up tiling a fair amount of this off and not leaving studs exposed and not putting too much fine detail in there. So that was helpful. Took quite a bit longer than I wanted it to, to get this little bit of progress done. But I'm decently happy with the start that I have here. It's a good base and it got me to thinking about other parts, you know, other things that I need to consider as I begin to build up. Like, how am I going to get a person up there? And it looks like it's not going to be that difficult as long as I have some sort of platform up here. So it's, you know, it, it's getting, it's getting me out of the stuck mental state and it's getting me going and prepared to work on other things. I still don't know exactly what I'm gonna do up here though, just in general. So in the interest of continuing on with doing things that I know or moving towards solving problems that I am aware of, I went back to the city and I went back to that pier and from right here to right here, that is the length of span that I need. That's how far I need my crane to be able to reach. So as this is right now, you know, this original version, lining it up, <laughs> definitely not going to do the trick. So I need to figure out how I'm going to get that much reach. And I also need to figure out what kind of design that I want for a crane. You know, there are many different ways that I could do this. And I'm not necessarily trying to do something that is 100% realistic. If you're going for a particular, a particular real life thing, then, you know, that can help to narrow things down for you. In my case, I'm keeping things open-ended, which can be a downfall of a project if you, again, get back into that stuck state because there are so many possibilities. So offline, I have gone through and looked at some real life images of as many different types of big cranes as I could and looked at the different types that have just horizontal booms and luffing booms. And the, this is called a level luffing, uh, type of crane like you can look up all kinds of different ones and i am willing to do something different to create something unique so i'm just going to start playing around with parts at this point to see what i can come up with that makes sense to me that will just 
span that distance. So here goes one of my favorite parts of the entire mock building process. One of the most free, one of the most uh, open-ended, stress-free parts, and that is just grabbing parts. I try to just reach into as many different parts bins as possible and grab pieces that I feel could potentially either directly contribute to a, a an eventual build or an eventual part of the build or inspire a new direction. So, you know, I've grabbed support pieces, I've grabbed actual crane boom pieces, and I've grabbed a bunch of Technic stuff, some older stuff, some Bionicle stuff, some more recent large action figure pieces, just anything that I think could make me think about different ways to do a crane boom. And at this point, I'm also thinking about color. So I do want this to have uh, some color to it. I don't want it to just be an all red crane. I was considering yellow just because there are so many crane boom pieces that I have available in yellow. And you know, it's a common thing for construction. I also considered red, but I don't want to use too much red because I've already got the red legs. I want something that will contrast. And I was thinking about using orange as a as a contrast. I think that would actually work out pretty well. But I end up pretty quickly moving more strongly in the direction of lime green. Now that takes direct inspiration from a set that I had reviewed not too long before this from Lego. It was a Lego city set, the race boat transporter. And in that review, I mentioned the color scheme and how I generally don't like green and red. I've, I'm sure I've mentioned that in, in reviews over the past years when green and red are used together outside of a Christmas theme. I generally just don't like them together. However, in that race boat transporter set, I liked how the two worked together, the regular Lego red and a lime green. And I decided in this case, it would be a good idea to challenge myself to make that color scheme work. You know, I generally don't see it work. I saw Lego do it, so I know it's possible. And now I wanted to just add that as an additional challenge for myself. And during this process, so in addition to looking at color and overall shape, I'm also considering the type of crane that I'm gonna build here. And because I haven't done a lot of cutting in the footage that you're looking at here, you've pretty much seen just a sped up version of the real time process of me experimenting right in front of you and, and putting pieces together and seeing what they would look like and just looking at the visual balance and and seeing if anything just looked cool to me. And you've seen me moving in the direction, actually fairly quickly, of an articulated system. You know, basically two segments to the arm looking somewhat like an excavator arm where you have an upper arm and a lower arm. You know, you've got a, a boom and a jib. But I really didn't want this to end up looking like an excavator in the end. And that's one of the reasons that I stuck with trying to force myself to use different looking pieces, non-smooth pieces for the jib or the forearm, you know, the, the, the second segment, the, the outermost segment of the arm. I wanted it to still look like a crane from a distance from, from that, that first glance. So I, I tried to go with non-solid, uh, a non-solid appearance out there for the jib. And then I moved in the direction of a solid appearance or a relatively smooth appearance a basically rounded corner uh, square tube kind of design for the lower arm, for the, the main boom uh, segment of it. And that's where I would attach my hydraulics as well. Now, there are good things and there are bad things about using large pieces as, as the basis for moving forward and, and trying to, to rough in the design of, of a mock, at least, at least to me. I personally actually like the looks of a lot of Lego's large preform, preformed pieces, like their boat hulls, uh, those A-frame uh, legs that I ended up using for this. I like their crane booms. I like a lot of their, their large pieces. You know, some people absolutely do not and want to stay away from them, and that's perfectly fine. That's just going to be a matter of, of personal taste. And in this case, you saw me convert fairly suddenly, actually, from sticking with just the preformed pieces and then giving up completely at the lower level and going with a custom design. That's because I wanted a different shape. I wanted a specific shape and I wanted to be able to put connections in where I wanted them to be. And also, 
I did want this to end up looking fairly custom. I don't want it to look like just an amalgamation of preformed pieces. But, you know, it, it, for me, it's rarely a primary goal. Sometimes it is, but it's rarely a primary goal to minimize the use of Lego's own designs of parts. I think that their part designers are really good at what they do. I think that any Lego piece is a Lego piece, whether it's a, a one by one <laughs> plate or it's, you know, a, a long Technic part or something that's, that's intricate. As far as I'm concerned, just with my own personal ethics, <laughs> if you will, for, for what little that really matters, uh, as long as I'm using Lego parts, I'm, I'm happy with it. And as long as I'm happy with how the thing looks when it's done. So for this grain, I've already got the major large legs and I'm using some preformed pieces, some large-ish preformed pieces for parts of the arm. And then for a large part of the arm, I'm just doing my own custom build. And it'll be a combination between custom stuff and Lego's part designs. Progress. So once again, this took longer than expected to get that amount of progress. And some of, some of it just involved experimentation, like this extra length here. I was looking into a, a possibility of how it could do its own leveling just to some degree. And it didn't work out with just the shape and size of everything, but it's okay. Um, I do have some weird looking things up here. I'm not 100% positive that I'm going to keep it that way, but the geometry is right about where I need it. And if I want to later change this out just to change its aesthetics, I definitely can. But this is going up and down. The spool will not be mounted up here on the arm eventually, but I've got a single ram in place here, which is well secured. And then I've got two rams back here, hydraulic rams, you know, simulated hydraulic rams. I've got a pivot point right here, which is locked in from the back. From the, the back has a plate going across it with a couple of studs on the side pieces. Uh, that are that are clamping the whole thing. So I've got the strength that I need. And now I need to connect these bars here, these axles with the stoppers at the end, to some supports, which ultimately need to be connected to the turret. So I need to start thinking about cab placement and the turret and a base on which to place the turret other than just this little temporary stand-in thing. So now move on to the next phase. All right, so I took a couple minutes to clear off a little bit of the table here so I can give myself some more clean room once again. And I realized, well, I realized a few things. First of all, these hydraulic rams right here need to be able to almost pull horizontally. And I kind of want them to be on a structure like this. Like this is what came to mind at first, having something, you know, kind of have the platform down here, the base, and then I want to have something diagonal going up. But something like this alone probably won't be enough because anything that's attached just to those top two studs right there won't be able to handle the shearing force of holding up all of this, this whole arm. And that's another thing, just the weight of this. I mean, it's not that, it doesn't weigh that much, but uh, the whole idea of a counterbalance is something that I did not consider up to this point. I was looking at it from like an excavator arm sort of perspective, but I really should have a counterbalance on this. So I'm going to work on some some different possibilities for how to get this nice and secure in there. I have these pieces, these Technic pieces, just, you know, left arms, basic ones to, to consider. And I'm trying to figure out, like, if I can lock these together somehow. If I put an axle straight through there at the main lower pivot point, then... I don't know if I could do something like this, because this is now in line here. So if I line this up, that can be connected and then connect something where these will connect to the inside. Like that. I don't know if I'll use just a straight piece on the outside. Something. Something's going to happen there. Or maybe, maybe this is another option. I could even go across. I don't know if I would do that, maybe going this way. I wonder if I want to use another one of these exactly. I kind of want to keep it, keep it low, I think. And I believe these are, these are at, yeah, these are at the same angle. So they, they should be able to line up. 
like so. Yeah, I need to experiment with that a little bit and think about the idea of a, a counterweight, which will depend upon just where this sits relative to the turntable. So at some point, well, right now, I'm gonna grab this bit of turntable right on off of here. I'm gonna use that same piece, because why not? I like to use parts when possible from kind of my starting point. Even if things aren't recognizable afterwards, it's nice to have just that little connection. I'm probably going to use this, not guaranteed though. I may switch over to something else for the pivot, but where this sits relative to that turntable is gonna determine how I end up setting up some sort of counterbalance. And I think I might use one of those train ballast pieces that Lego has done, which was a, a two by six by two with some metal inside of it. I haven't made those in a long time, but they're very weighty. And if I can hide that somehow, and I also need to figure out a cab, right? Obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but I don't want to use a six stud wide cab. I want to keep it just to four studs wide, just like I did for my, my overhead gantry crane that I used. This is a nice little system pivoting out like that though. Uh, maybe not realistic, but yeah, I want to keep that as small, just as narrow as possible because already this is essentially four studs wide here, and I may need to go wider than that. Most likely we'll need to go wider than that for my base structure, so I don't want this to be absolutely huge. Structure, stability, and strength are things that I've considered up to this point, but right now is where they become really, really, really important, where they become, I'd say, the top priorities. Attaching that entire arm, a large portion of which is solid, and which will have dangling off the end of it, cargo, to a turntable that's just a four by four, that's in turn on some pretty tall legs that aren't too wide. Well, that definitely is gonna put a lot of stresses into this thing. So right here, my initial focus to get the arm attached was on making that strong. I needed to use Technic here to be sure. And this is something that I personally have not specialized in at all, uh, especially looking at the interface between pure technique building and you know system based stud based stuff and i completely understand why lego itself has technic specialists who get consulted on system based builds you know for new set designs because it's kind of like a different language entirely fortunately i have the benefit of having learned from a bunch of lego designers by having just built a bunch of their sets and paying attention to what they did and recognizing why they did what they did but i personally myself am just not that good at it yet so some experimentation was of course in order as is always the case but i i tried to i tried to use all the knowledge that you know, all the actual knowledge that i had that i could bring to bear to make this actually work to make this strong at the base where i wouldn't have to worry about pieces bending and definitely wouldn't have to worry about them breaking but I didn't want to put undue stresses on things and I wanted this to be able to balance I wanted it to be able to hold itself I wanted it to make sense and next I got to work on the cab and that was definitely the easiest most straightforward thing because it just needed to be four studs wide it needed to hold a figure inside I wanted to have an inverted style of of windshield or to be closer to the center line at the base you know so it, as as it goes from the bottom to the top it would extend out and i ended up uh, choosing a speed champions windshield mounted on the side just to have a little bit of a different look to it you know something a little bit rounded just for the sake of being different but overall i mean it's a cab you know it's pretty straightforward just regular system building and it would just go onto a platform that I would build out around the base of the arm. I also wanted to have a suggestion of a way for a figure to get in and out of the cab and also to climb up to it. I believe I mentioned that earlier with a, an idea for just a ladder coming down the side that would need to line up and I'd need to have an interface between the the operator level and the access along the side which would just be a string of ladders so i wanted those to fit together that required a little bit of of extra doing a little bit of extra 
experimentation, but ultimately, you know, that was relatively simple stuff. And once that was done, I just needed to put something behind what ended up being a small walking platform area right there to represent an engineering box. Now, I, I still don't know how this thing is being powered. It may be powered from the ground like many harbor cranes are, where they just have a an electrical wire that goes through, maybe some hydraulic lines or, or something. I just didn't figure all of that out, but I knew that there would need to be some sort of engineering box, a box of circuitry or something up top. And so I built a box and put it behind and I tried to do something a little bit different with the shape of it on the back with some studs on the side construction, just because why not? I didn't want it to be perfectly rectangular, but again, that's relatively straightforward stuff done just for the sake of looks. I also decided to very, very slightly beef up the top of the legs just to give them a little bit of extra shape in the interface between them and the turret segment. Give it a little bit of tapering in there that would look a little bit better from a distance, I think. And then I just needed to get the upper ladder and lower ladder segments to line up. That was pretty much it. There it is. Added on just a few more little details I snuck into place, including a few stickers. I'll bring this into the studio so you can see it up close and see how it actually works and everything, but I wanted to show it to you in place as intended. And hey, it does the trick. It does exactly what I wanted it to do. It fits in the space properly. It's unique, uh, but I do have some issues with it that I may address in the future. Let me go ahead and Bring this in so you can see it up close and against a clean background and all. First thing I'm going to do here is just give it the old slow spin, you know, give you a chance to see what it looks like from some different angles. Incidentally, this is kind of my first time seeing it. Well, at least like this as well. And uh, it looks a bit different than it did in the in the building space from limited angles and with tons and tons of parts sitting around, you know, being able to just isolate it and look at it like this for me for the first time is a good experience. It actually looks better than I was feeling. Yeah, I'm actually feeling better about it now from multiple angles. Yeah. All right. This is good and good is good. It still has its issues. Um, definitely, you know, at some point in the future, some things may be improved. I would like to improve some things, change some things, experiment a little bit more. But for a first major stab at it, yeah, I'm feeling pretty, pretty happy about this. Let me also show you how it works. Obviously down at the ground level, you just have those plastic wheels, which fit into the rails. They don't actually fit into the rails as well as I would like to. Uh, I think at some point I need to put some additional bracing between these these A-frame pieces, maybe at this level here where there are some some studs back here I can I can expose and then uh, just make the width, the spacing between the two a little bit more consistent. I think that'll help quite a bit because right now it's just a little bit pinched towards the base just naturally. Uh, another thing that actually matters here is the ladder system here. I think I'd like to add some some bracing or some protection for a person who's going up, you know, some rails along the side. But as you get up here, you know, there's this kind of jump that that's not going to work, right? So the idea is that this would turn around the, the whole cab section on the, the turret and all would turn around. And then there's this bit that just gets let down and that kind of bridges the gap right there. It's actually not lining up quite the way. I guess that's, that's okay. But from this lower angle, it's not lining up quite as well as I would like it to. But the idea is once somebody gets up there, you know, it's initially un yeah, unoccupied. Uh, once they get up there, they pull on the chain and they just pull this up and then it's out of the way. It's more the thought that counts though, right? Speaking of which, I've got access for a figure here with this door that opens up. Just a simple little door. But the cab does not have a rotating seat. I have a, a just a regular... Lego chair in there. Uh, I kind of like the shape of those, but there's not enough room for that to rotate around. I'm trying to figure out if there's a way that I could leave enough space in there. I'm not sure if I could with the window 
at the height it is. I'll have to think about that a little bit more, but it would be nice to be able to get the operator to rotate around, but you know, they'd be able to walk back here freely. There's actually one stud on the otherwise tiled off little platform surf surface in the middle. So I could pose a figure there. And then it's again, thought that counts kind of thing going on with the access panel for what I call the engineering box back here. It's not able to actually open because one of these uh, yellow bars is in the way. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, it, it'll open a little bit, but it, it's more just for the looks. You got to have something that looks like it would be an ac a usable access panel for figures. And then as for the, the whole arm setup, so I've got two hydraulic you know, simulated hydraulic rams right here, which are horizontal at this point, which is just interesting. Just not a, not a setup that I expected at all, uh, but it is something that I've seen level luffing cranes do. Uh, this is not a level luffing crane, but this setup just, I don't know, it was just what I needed, uh, geometrically speaking. And then all of this back here, this entire extension is just an additional arm, which is somewhat independent of the main one. It's only attached to the hydraulic rams. So it's, it's ultimately the interface between the rams and the support structure beneath. And that's all just to hold on to this counterweight back here. I used the, the train counterweight. I put tiles and jumpers on top, inverted tiles on the underside. And so it's all smooth on the outside. And that just moves with the, with the rams, which do rotate ever so slightly as this goes up and down. Now, I, I do think they have a little bit too much friction here with the two hydraulic rams. There's quite a bit there. I have to really pull on it. I think it would... I think it would work better if there was just one of them, but it looks better to have two. And also I like the stability, but you can see, I can, I can get the, the, the line to get in really, really close to this. Uh, and it can actually even get closer than that. It can get dangerously close to the center line. So good range of motion going this way. And then to, to bring it down just slowly, carefully, and you'll see the, the weight back here, just slowly and slightly moving up and out. So it kind of comes down and in, and then it goes up and out. And it's it's subtle, but it is enough to actually make a difference. Uh, this has no chance of, of wanting to fall. I think the, the least stable way to set this up is completely towards the side. And it's still decently well balanced like this. There is more weight out here, but uh, uh, it's 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 working it's working okay. So I've got that range there, and if I just bring this back up. So bring the jib down so that can come all the way to there. You know, it can almost reach down to the ground and it can also come back here. So it has a good range and you know, that's, that's definitely not an accident, but all that works. I always have clearance for the, the main cable there. This is all just taken off of the initial crane, the, the blue one from the train set that I started with. And that's because it works just fine. I definitely wanted to have one of these for bulk loading and offloading, especially for the ship that I have right there. That's full of white studs. It's perfect for that. Plus there's a lot of nostalgia here for, I mean, they've, they've had this set of pieces or at least a set very, very much like it since I was a kid and, and a set that I had when I was a kid had this in it. So I definitely want to have these, but the nice thing about this, that they have a small ball socket right there and you can just stick a, uh, a hook right in there one of the, the hooks with the ball socket or excuse me with the ball end on it will fit right in there so it's nice interchangeability that way it's very convenient so i figured i just wouldn't change that i could customize it a little bit just to say it's all mine but no nah, it's it's perfectly fine just as it is so that's basically how this works and look at that it's sizable too. I mean, I'm right here. This is not a, a trick of the, the camera. You know, this is not super close to you with super wide angle lens and everything. It has some, some height. It has some reach. Kind of like this thing. Like I said, it's, it's definitely better looking at it now in person, especially by itself, than it has looked to me this whole time. Now, things that I, that I want to change, that I want to improve eventually, uh, or, or would like to eventually make better. Uh, some of this Technic stuff that shows up 
is a little bit too exposed for me. I'd like to, to hide some of that away just a little bit, especially on the, the jib section and a little bit down in here where some of the axle, uh, yeah, just some of the axles show and the axle holes on some of those Technic pieces. I like this bit right here. That's good. I like, I like how, how thin that is and technical it looks, but then some of these parts don't quite fit with that. If I could, if I could continue that look all the way, almost to the tip, that would be great. But I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. On the sides here, I had originally put some uh, two by four, uh, uh, brackets on here, which have right now just two one by four tiles and one on either side has a sticker on it. Uh, that could be swapped out to, cause it's just a little bit thick right there, thicker than it needs to be half a plate on either side. So I could embed into this arm, some, uh, one by one, uh, bricks with the single stud on either side, one on either end, and then just use some one by six tiles or one one by six tile. I think that would actually look better. Um, again, there's a little bit too much friction here. Just doing this, like that's uncomfortable. How much force has to be put into that. And I, I am holding on to the base a little bit because I'm, I'm worried that the turntable will get ripped off from doing that. So that's, that's something that definitely needs to be considered in the future. And something I had not thought about was securing the top to the base. I think some form of, of Technic clamp in there would go a long way to securing that and making me feel better about that. So that's just something that I, I've learned just, just recently. Uh, I, I never thought about that. Now, a lot of the strength here is, is good. This works okay, but I do need to get those legs to be a little bit more consistently at the correct width apart. They're, they're just bent in, they're pinched in a little bit towards the base. And I already mentioned what I'd like to do around the, the, the ladder, just to make it look like it would be a little bit more safe for the figures that go up and down. And I mentioned, you know, wanting to have a, a rotating uh, chair in there, but otherwise this is not bad. Oh yeah. Also, even though I tried to make it not look like an excavator, it kind of looks like an excavator on stilts. And I wish there was an easy way to fix that, to, to alter that, to take some of that excavator kind of feel away from it. I know that, that just running a hook here would help you know, when I do that, but still having the cab offset like that and the way that the arm is set up, it kind of looks like an excavator no matter what. And that was not my intent, but oh well. Overall, I'm, I'm happy with the process. I hope that you've enjoyed following along with this process and let me know what you think about the format of this video here. Uh, in the past, you know, I've done many different things to show the mock process. And I think that this is a little bit more interactive, giving some narration throughout, focusing on letting you know what I'm thinking and what I'm doing and, and why. I hope that that was a little bit more useful than just a little bit of talking and then just showing just the, the speed build of, of the process for a long time. But if you have any specific suggestions for me for how to do this type of video, please let me know what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of, because in between the major review seasons, when a lot of new stuff has come out, I'm going to be working a lot harder starting this year on the city because I really enjoy that stuff. And there are so many things that need to be done and I want to do them all. So thank you for watching. Hope that you've enjoyed this again. Looking forward to your feedback and I'll talk to you again soon.